Welcome once again guys, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking Federalist Papers again. This is chapter 3 and this is still J. So the thing that I think that I found most interesting in reading this is he's talking about qualifications at this point. So he's already ready to have a Federalist government, he's already, you know, saying, you know, I'm afraid that we'll lose and we there's all this outside pressure. So this is what he says now I think is the most important thing that he said. When once an efficient national government is established, the best men in the country will not only consent to serve, but also will generally be appointed to manage it. For although town or country or other contracted influence may place men in state assemblies or senates or courts of justice or executive departments, yet more general and extensive reputation for talents and other qualifications will be necessary to recommend men to offices under the national government especially as it will have the widest field for choice and never experience that want of proper person, which is not uncommon in some of the states. Hence, it will result that the administration, the political councils, and the judicial decisions of the national government will be more wise, systematical, and judicious than those of individual states, and consequently more satisfactory with respect to the other nations as well as more safe with respect to us. So what he is basically saying here is that once we have this national government, of course people will just want to work in it. And of course people of good character and who have good morals and everything will want to volunteer for it. Um, <clears throat> there, the, there's no mention of pay for this. This is a volunteer job. This is serve your country job. This is... Um, I think the only person to be paid from the beginning was the president, and that's it. Everybody else was volunteer, come in, do a couple hours, and leave, kind of thing. So this is what they were thinking about when they start thinking about, well, who would run it? And they're thinking about people who have already these actions behind them, right? So good war heroes or people who just have lived in an area for so long people know them and they know the character of this man all right what is interesting to me also about this <clears throat> is that you can see this today but it's like almost a mockery of it because now people whenever they go and they stump to run they talk about their 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 military history they talk about the good things they did for the community or they talk about all this stuff because of this idea that that's who we're putting in our offices and that's where that comes from jay is the one who writes this and says you know well of course this is the people who's going to be there and i don't doubt that there are people who go there thinking well i'm going to change the nation i'm going to work for the people the problem is is even if there's people who do that, then once they get there, they are changed. And that's not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to be that kind of thing. There's not supposed to be so much power involved here that it changes people. All right. <clears throat> also, I think that whenever he's talking here about uh, the extensive reputation for talents and that these men are recommended to these offices, that that means they probably already had a position in a local government. And you can see that today also where people used to be mayors or whatever. And then you can see how well they ran that area. Right now, we're in a situation where people who have almost zero experience running uh, an area politically or as a mayor or whatever are winning our elections because these other people who have these other experiences have become so corrupt that they no longer work for the people and that's a problem so <clears throat> what do you guys think do you think jay is being you know pretty naive about this i think he is i think those people that he was hoping for and thinking that of course all these good people will stand up to it i don't think he understood that good people don't want to rule over other people, even if it is just a little bit. Good people, people who are trying to be good, let's say that, 
generally say you just go do whatever and I don't want to have a convert I don't want to know what you're doing unless you're hurting other people so Jay to me I don't like Jay all that much I think he's very afraid I think he's very scared I think that he is trying to rely on the idea that only good people will get into here and as we all know historically and otherwise this that's not the case evil people get into power because <laughs> they like it they want it okay in general <clears throat> so I think he's being naive but I think this is why also other than fear he also just believed in the he had like this um, amazing naivete I guess you could say about who would run it because they just left I mean this is 1787 I think they just left the English area where these men with power just had you know became evil for years and years hundreds of years so I don't think he's thinking very straight I don't think he's thinking very wisely even though he's talking about wisdom and everything and how it would be run I also think this is where our age restriction comes from is this idea right here where you have to have some time under your belt as a person and etc like that so <clears throat> I don't know what do you guys think that's chapter three basically because the rest of it is just him saying like well how it would work and why we would do it this way etc um, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep going chapter by chapter because the next two or three I think are J <laughs> just talking about how afraid he is that the nation will fall we still have that same fear now I'm afraid the nation will fall and the thing is it's gonna fall from the inside and all of this political correctness and all of this idea of well government can do it for us that's not the fear to just put his his naivete another way that's not the fear that the the founding fathers had the fear that they had was that outside forces because we were so small would be able to come in and take us over that was their big fear all right and they had two secondary fears one that we would squabble amongst ourselves because we were so new still and that would make us fall and then the third one was they had debts they had to pay after the war and they could not enforce taxation so they how were they going to pay for it is all that they could think so Jay's very afraid they're all very afraid that they're gonna lose the thing that they fought so hard for and I understand that I respect that I just disagree I would not have been the person who would have thought that the Federalists uh, or that the national government I think is as has what he calls it yeah the national government would have been the answer so I disagree with this founding father but there it is that's what he's mostly uh, worried about or upset about I put the link in the bottom for you to read so you can read for yourself and see what he says it's very important for you to know what these guys were thinking because right now we have all kinds of things floating around about well that's not what the founding fathers said and that's not what they really wanted and everything go read what they were writing about they were mainly concerned about outside forces taking us over secondarily concerned with our squabbles defeating us and then thirdly concerned with we got to pay the debts off for our for for our our war we just fought here okay they did not care about a lot of the things like they didn't care about the environment they didn't care about you know whether or not a company was um, lying or not or stealing from people they did not care about that for the national government that's not what they wanted it for okay you have to think about these things also there were companies running at the time not the same but there were people had businesses that's how people thrive that's how people made money all all throughout history they own a business they didn't they weren't worried about all of that because they knew people being free things would adjust themselves the way that we say that now is the market will take care of it and they already understood this and that's why they're not worried about it in my opinion that seems to be why so that's all I want to say for today, guys. I wanted to get back more on to some of this political stuff. The um, 
apparently one of my most popular videos is my pagan to Christian one and that is where I get most of my that's where most people talk to me that's mostly what they talk to me about so if I pop in and do another one of those that's why I hope you enjoy those either way because Christianity and the building of this nation go hand in hand Christianity and your ability to be successful go hand in hand so it's not completely off but there it is that's all that's all I, that's the only reason why I wanted to bring that up so I hope you guys are having a great day. Remember to read your Bible and pray and read these Federalist Papers. They're free online. You can get them at the library even. So, you know, just educate yourself a bit. And have a great day. Bye.